What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I'm out in Dubai and I'm going to be joined today with a special guest, someone who I rate very highly in the fitness industry, the one, the only, Ben Pakulski. He just so happens to be out here whilst I'm out here. I reached out to him and said, hey, do you want to get a training session in? And he said, yes, why not? However, the only downside is that we're going to be training at 6.30. It's currently 6.30 in the morning. I never train at this time, so it's going to be a little bit of an interesting one. And we were talking about what we're going to train today. I think we're going to be training legs, I'm not sure, I don't know if he was just thrown out there to test me but I'm up for training anything to be honest, I had a rest day yesterday so should be a good session, there should be a hell of a lot of tension applied to whatever muscle group we're going to be training today, so let's go. Right, we're just going to start off the session by doing some leg extension, just warm the quads, get the knees nice and loose and then we'll get fully stuck in. So before you start, check that. So always fist apart. I'm having a little bit of a bad habit, or well, have been in the past where my knees would roll out at the bottom of the movement. So I need to keep everything tight and fixed. Try to move that weight up. I want you to think about driving your quad down through the pad. Ben, would you mind repeating exactly what you just said? No, it's gone now, man. It's gone. <laughs> gone. I forgot what I said. <laughs> yeah, of course I will. So this is a hinge, right? Yeah. So if I'm doing this and I have a pad behind here, this is literally ripping my knee in half. Yeah. Right? So I need to like keep this in perfect alignment with the hinge of the machine. Yeah. As soon as it rolls out, you're literally ripping your knees. So. so what we have Mike doing on the leg extension is driving into an immovable object that I'm creating. So when we lift a weight, our nervous system is going to do the minimum effect to go. So if I have a 20 kilo dumbbell in my hand, your nervous system is only going to fire exactly enough muscle fibers to move that 20 kilos. But by pushing into something that's immovable, it's forcing his brain and his nervous system to, to push as hard as it possibly can for as many muscles as we can and then I release it to let him finish the rep. So it's just training his body and his nervous system to contract o more overall muscle fibers with every single repetition. That's the goal, to challenge more muscles with every single rep. Yeah, that was a wake-up call. That was a wake-up call. Either by driving to the seat or by using your pelvic floor. Yeah. So depending how you feel, we can do another one or. Uh, it's a shaking this weakness. Instability, it's called. The body's 
seeking stability. So it creates stability from the top, so the bottom has something to anchor on. Roll with your hands, with the bench, and with your stomach. Yeah. Come on, hard! Push! Good, come on, buddy. Go, come on! Finish her up, finish her up, you got three, let's go. Yeah. Oh! Come on. Go, 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 girl! Yes. Go it again, go it again, go it again, come on. Go, go, come on. Strong. Five parcels, five parcels, go. One. All right, you gotta hit it, let's go. Come on, man. Two, gotta hit it. Come on, Two, two. Come on. No. Fucking get it. No. How are you feeling? Oh, mate, it's just, it's just different. I think I train hard and then this is just the next level, really. The biggest thing I want you to focus on here, lower your feet can get the better, and contract your hip flexor as much as possible. When you get to this position, it's trying to actively use your hip flexor to pull you further. Yeah. So it's not letting yourself passively fall, it's actively pulling yourself there. Am I doing any specific intention? No, don't worry about it. Yeah. So it's light enough so when you come to the bottom you're actively pulling here, you're trying to contract to pull you down a little bit further. Now the only thing I would cue you on is drive your knees out a little bit into me. Yeah. Shut them out. Yeah. Good. Now keep going. Drive your lower back here as hard as you can. Drive your feet hard as hard as you can there. So we're trying to make every rep as hard as possible. The whole eccentric we're driving back all the way. Now think about doing a leg extension. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're driving up with your feet with a little, like a leg extension. Push up. All the tension is created between that lower back and driving up with those feet. Don't let the form change, just keep pushing this thing away. So I'll, I'll always be there, keep the tempo the same for you. So you're not gonna get stuck, you're not gonna fail. I'm always there. I got you. Find the feet, pull your toes up off the pad. Good. Pull those toes up. Yes. Good. All you do, you're safe. Go to the bottom, try to find a little more depth. Contract here. Pull yourself down. There! Yeah, you're safe, man. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't touched it yet. Let's go. Push. Don't explode off the bottom. Contract. Let's go. Squeeze. Squeeze. One more. One more. Let's go again. I haven't touched it yet. All you. Pull those toes up. Yep. Set. Objectively today, so when I find an exercise I'm good at or you're good at, we're gonna try to load it. We're gonna try to get in that five or six range, right? If it's something you're not really good at, we'll stay in the higher rep range. Yeah. Something you're really good at, which you are here, 
load it. So I want you to go as heavy as you can until I see your phone start to break. So that, that at that point, yeah, I'm just going to let the, rate, the respirator be as long as it needs to be to go as heavy as possible. Why, why the fuck does it quick prep? Because you want to get strong with the things you're good at, right? So yeah. that's going to increase the neuro neurological output, that's going to increase the muscular recruitment. So I want to get strong with things I'm good at. If I'm not good at something, what's the point of getting strong at it? I can't even hold the movement pattern with lighter weights. Yeah. There's something I'm not good at, 15, 20 reps. Right? Yeah. Stabilize that lower back, stabilize the trunk. Ah, boy. All you, man. Have a touch. Let's go. Come on, Mike. Easy three, three. Let's go. Strong. Easy. Let's go. Strong. Stay there. Hi. Good, try those feet hard. Lower back and feet, lower back and feet. Good, two. Ah, come on, buddy, I got you, you're safe. Two. Strong reps. Strong. Come on, keep those feet down, I got you. Pull your toes up. Up. Go again, go again, I got you. Come on, grind through it. Toes up. Come on, Mike. One more. Keep those heels down, brother. Pull those toes up, come on. Come on, strong. Come on. <laughs> One more. Strong, right down. Let's go. Feet. Feet. Try those feet hard. Go straight. Come on. Do it again. Oh. Stop putting those heels up. I'm making you do it again. Let's go. You're right. Come on. Oh. Holy pump. First stop. I'm going to contract. Shut Yes. Yeah. As hard as you can, push up, push back. Good. One more. But you're still pushing down there. Was it more driving with the heel? Pushing here, and here. It's like no, there's three points of contact. So I don't want to push toes. As soon as I push toes, my knee jumps in. That's why it needs to be unconscious. It needs to be, the exercise needs to be the point where you don't think about it. Just push and you feel safe going past where you would normally go. Because like, I'm not going to let you bail, right? I'm Fatigue is kicking in at the bottom where your lower back's moving forward. Yeah. But the top of the range probably still has a lot of it, a lot of potential output because you're so much stronger here. Yeah. So rather than putting more weight on, you just change the weight a little bit. Is there any reason for why I'm particularly weak at the bottom? Stability. Stability. Yeah. <clears throat> so as you fatigue, your brain senses instability and it will down-regulate muscle contraction. So here, I'm structurally stable, meaning my, my bones are stable. Here, it's completely dependent on muscles. So as your muscles fatigue, you become more, less stable. Yeah. Make it hard for you 
yourself at the bottom. down to that pad as hard as you can. Good. And don't let this come up. So brace and don't let this move. Yeah. Down. Okay, stop. Put this down. Yeah. So this stays up. This goes down. Squeeze. And that kind of move. Stop right there. Put this back down. Cue it down. There. Check. Check. Yep. So you're trying for a pop through your pipe itself, right? So as you get tired, your ass is doing this. I want you to keep here. Yep. So bust here. Within your programming, would you incorporate supersets? Like, would you only recommend an advanced trainer to do that? Compared to, for example, a beginner? Like, if I was a complete beginner, and I'd given that all of my effort, yeah. would it be realistic for them to then go straight onto another exercise? Yeah. yeah, so here's the way you look at it. As an advanced lifter, there's, there's utility in doing that if you're trying to increase the amount of metabolic output, so I'm trying to burn more calories. Mm -hmm. For a beginner lifter, their ability to generate work on that is terrible, right? If they can't contract really, really hard, they're not actually challenging their muscles because they don't have the stability, they don't have the skill of executing that movement. So that would be a good time to then challenge them in some way in synergy, right? So we may, we may pick complementary exercises where this works the short end of the range. We may pick something that works the length end of the range. Or we may pick something that's completely opposite like we're doing with lunges. Just so they're getting some muscular challenge. Because yeah. a beginner, like I said, can't contract muscles hard. So even though they think they're working hard, the muscles aren't getting a lot of work. Yeah. <clears throat> so it'll be a good time to incorporate com uh, complementary exercises. Yeah.
between the quads and the hands? No, I'll do one day that's quad dominant with a little bit of hands. One day that's hand dominant with a little bit of quads. Okay. Or four days apart. And do you do like a certain number of exercises or do you just go with how you feel on the day? Uh, it's always progressing somewhere usually, right? So, you know, today if we did four working sets for quads, next time I'll make it do at least, be sure to do at least five. Yeah. Take it as far as you can. Get better right now. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get better on this set. Get better on this set. Push! Good two, you got your hand if you need it. Let's go, use that fucking leg. Push that foot down. Good, yeah! One more, buddy. Get better today, man. You're getting better today. Yes, good job. Down hard, let's go. Let's go through the floor. You get three. Come on, strong. Yep. Come on. So, thank you very much for that, Ben. Good I, man. I was wondering if. You could just tell me what I need to focus on based on what you saw on today's session. What are my potential sure. weaknesses? So like most people, as we start to challenge muscle, your weaknesses will appear. Yeah. Right? So everyone's strong in the beginning when they're fresh and they're rested. As we start to challenge different exercises, what you're noticing is certain parts of the exercise become a little shaky, certain parts become, parts become a little weak. So your brain, your nervous system, as it senses instability it will down regulate muscle contraction so you'll get weaker in certain positions so you notice on the leg extension you're starting to get a little shaky pelvic instability and you notice at the bottom of the hack squat you're starting to feel like you're coming up with your toes you get a little bit shaky your lower back will start around a little bit pelvic instability right so both of those manifesting at about 90 degrees of hip flexion so if we can start training stability at 90 degrees of hip flexion your ability to generate output is your legs will go up your legs will grow so growth and muscle contractile ability is governed by stability. If I don't have stability, my brain senses weakness, or senses instability, it'll shut down the muscle, it'll, it'll create weakness. It's like walking on ice, right? What happens, your body just kind of down regulates contraction. You're not as, as strong on an unstable surface because your body's going into protective mode. So for you to get better output on your legs, it's all about know, pelvic stability, and that happens both from the top and from the inside, right? It can happen from the bottom. But what most people don't pay attention to is the pelvic floor, and that would be something I suggest you keep start paying attention to. Yeah. yeah, sweet, cool. So make sure you check out all of Ben's work. What's your website and Instagram handle? Uh, MuscleIntelligence.com or BPAC Fitness on Instagram. Yeah, got on YouTube. Are you active uh, on that? Same still? thing, Muscle Intelligence. If you just look at Muscle Intelligence, there's the podcast, there's YouTube, there's the website, sweet. and coaching is the. Cool. So thanks for tuning in guys. Hopefully we'll do this again sometime Absolutely. soon. Absolutely, let's do it. I'll see you guys soon.